moving on to that new season here very shortly. But a few recap items before we get the season underway. Uh, first off, our final index for the year, meaning where we rank among the other teams in terms of quality, is 62nd place. Well down inside the Continental ranks, but also much better than where we were a year ago. Uh, also, unfortunately, though, we are already onto a virtually nothing balance, but you do get a little cash influx at the end of the year, so we'll see if that counters uh, this lack of balance now. Otherwise, we could be in a world of hurt because, financially speaking, we are about 10 grand less in terms of budget, and we're about 10 grand more in terms of expenses. And we were only just making a marginal profit month by month. So uh, we've got about a $20,000 budget fall at the moment, which means most likely something's going to have to give in terms of, like, say, training uh, staff members. We're going to have to cut back a bit. But let's see what that influx is going to be first before I go and make a rash decision on that topic. The World Championships in the time trial, it was Soren Krag Anderson with the win this year ahead of Roman Dennis and Thomas DeGent. And in the road race, the rainbow colors, the jersey will go to Rafael Maika next season. And Tom DeMoulin was second ahead of Steven Kruzweig. Of course, we have uh, our final ranking. It was actually 57th at the time. It's now 62nd. That puts us in Continental. And those rankings are Jumbo Visma ahead of Duquesne Quickstep and Idios. Those are the four and a half star teams. Lots of four star teams this year. The Israel startup is into that four star ranking now. The three and a half star final world tour positions AG2R ahead of NTT Kofidis, all world tour this last season. And then now moving up. Alpacin, so Alpacin back into the World Tour rankings. Movie, st movie star. From one of the best teams in the world for many, many seasons, and all of a sudden, they are <laughs> heading to the Continental Pro ranks. Arkea Samsic right there on the edge still. Direct Energy uh, looks to be a little down to me. And final Continental Pro team will be Beat Cycling. A couple teams on the way down. Kaha Rural, that's a bit of a surprise. Rally UHC, a bit of a surprise that they're going down. And there you can see where we fit into the rankings. Two stars. Mid two and a half is the cutoff for Continental Pro. And we are very much near the bottom of two-star, but almost yeah, we're, we're almost halfway up the list of the two-star teams. So we're essentially a solid half-star level away. That's not bad. I, I could see us maybe, maybe making that a year from now. And we went from a nothing zero-star team, and you can see with 87 in the rankings... There's only a couple of one-star teams, not that many one-and-a-half stars, so uh, we'll be in the, the thick of things in the Continental Rankings this next season. At this point on the team, what we have is we have Vermark uh, at a 71, Zeta already improving to a 70 from, what was he? 67, 68. <clears throat> Benedict Lyon at 69. Aphil and Tintani at 68. And Telford coming in at a 67. Of the remaining team members, we have two 57s now. Bosbeck and Khalifa. And Suskich at a 56. And Puchek at a 56. He is the most... Uh, the highest potential rider and might be literally the only one we end up hanging on to uh, later on once we cycle through. A lot of these guys have expiring contracts. All of them. 
all of them expiring this year. So, of those, uh, I'm not sure I'm going to hang on to anyone besides that. Yeah, Puchak has that 5 to 8. Soskic is a 4 7. Maybe we keep Soskic. Depends on how much they develop this year. But all the potential is now in the new riders. Soskic is a maybe, Puchek is a definite, everybody else is going to be gone. So we'll have uh, new writers coming in, but a lot of it's going to depend on where our budget is headed for this next season. And let's find out. We'll get to January 1st. January 1st, equipment delivery. We have Cannondale frames this year. While they're not perfect... For a team our size, this is really good equipment. We're not going to get any R&D, though, for that. We have Bunchger for the wheels, which is actually what I have on my own road bike. And, again, with a pretty dang decent, not the best for mountains, but it's very good reliability and feeling, and we'll, we'll take that. Uh, but, again, good equipment, no R&D. I'm okay with that. I'd rather have good equipment than terrible equipment and R&D packages. So... That's good. Uh, Preseason, the obvious way to go. If you know this game, if you know how to handle uh, the workload, you set everyone to very high. Of course, last season, with no calendar and a crap squad, I did use the AI to assist in our planning. It saved me a ton of time, but it also left us with a really b poor execution. So maybe we will uh, focus on that a bit more this year and sort that out. We'll figure out what the calendar is tomorrow as we move forward. And let's go ahead and do that. Everything always starts January 2nd. All right. Well, here we are. So, sponsor objectives. There are lots of them this season. So, meter cost is involved, even though they are not actually giving us crap for money. Uh, let's see. Acceptable holds at thirty-six. Success goes to forty, and super success goes to forty-four, which is roughly where we were a year ago. I think we were at forty-five. So, uh, that sucks we're definitely going to be looking at a new sponsorship as they have no real max and no real prospect going into next season and actually they have some pretty high demands which is surprising the good news though that's a lot of races these last two are post signing period so we're not worried about those everything else happens we have a top 10 top 10 Stage wins not happening. Stage wins on our big objectives are probably not happening. Top 10s we can probably pull off. A lot of top 10s in there, but the rest are stage wins. Uh, basic evaluation, well, hmm. Registered riders, none of that's happened yet. Hawaiian does have some notoriety which is good for us but that squad evaluation is very low very very low i mean we're looking at less than five percent so it's going to take some results this season and the registered writers part oian is going to be the only one that gets us anywhere on that and it's not going to be good so if we're looking at five percent five percent it's going to take a lot of decent results to get anything other than just maintaining whatever the level is and then trying to look for a new sponsor for next season. So actually, we could once again be in trouble on the sponsor confidence side of things. Not good. The one good thing, though, is there are definitely some races on the calendar. Quite a few races Uh, we still have zero repu reputation. So the one thing that this new team has done for us 
is gotten us involved in a lot of races on the calendar. Now there's some under 23s races here. Uh, it's a good opportunity for us to pick up some sort of result. This season, unlike last season, we're, we're going to be using a lot of quick sims on the calendar. But yes, yes, this is a very full continental slate, so uh, we'll have a busy year. Lots of opportunities to pick up some sort of result to hopefully at least keep us neutral and maybe get us back a little bit of money for next season. But then, realistically, the big thing we're looking at is we have all of those expiring contracts that all but a couple are going to be thrown away. In fact, yeah, we, we just have the guys we signed this year coming back. So big, big drop in uh, current squad. What is the... There we go. We have three, six, seven outgoing. So uh, we could replace that with almost another 20,000 as long as we're able to make ends meet this season. So we're still going to be looking at minimum budget and I think we're going to be kind of in the same ballpark of where we are now of low, low 70s. Look at uh, Zeta. Zeta, turn of the month, has jumped to a 72. Hooray. So he just became our, our top rider. Zeta is a 5'8". He's going to develop rapidly. Has developed rapidly already. I mean, look at it, Zeta. Evolution. Look, look at that continued upward trend. Man, oh man, oh man, oh man, oh man. And that's a huge increase from where he was. Love it, love it. Super stoked about that rider. So at this point, we have a couple Italians. We have four American riders. That's one thing to keep in mind as we go to get a new sponsor next year. Uh, we're now with a Canadian sponsor, and we have no Canadian riders. That doesn't help us. Uh, but as we go to wipe these guys off the face of the planet, other than uh, Puchek, that's, yeah, maybe Saskic. Uh, the rest will be replaced. So I'm doing my preseason planning instead of using the AI as a quick escape. And the planning is, is really simple. Get and maintain a super high fitness level. Train really hard all the time where you can really maintain that, but make sure you get your brakes in the appropriate places so that this red bar, which is your fatigue, never gets over 50%. 50% is where this starts to show up. So always make sure to give them periodic breaks and do what you can to maintain that highest fitness level. And here's where we get into racing. So these guys that are involved in the racing, their breaks are coming right before they begin their race programs. The guys at the bottom of the list, I'm not going to worry about them. I will let the AI manage those ones. So the only riders of the seven outgoing riders that I'm going to bother maintaining this year, Puchek, Saskic, at least for part of the season. For the most part, those seven, I'll allow the AI to control, but I'll manage the other seven. And speaking of, any higher objective is always going to go to the new riders as they are significantly better no matter what their focus is than the guys down here. I'll occasionally get Puchek or Saskic in amongst those guys, but otherwise the main focus, the main races, are always going to go to them. So that's the game plan. That'll get me through the first two months of the season. And speaking of, let's go ahead and get to it.
now at my first race of the year and it is a sponsor objective right off the bat it is a top 10 overall objective and we open with a prologue so just under nine kilometers uh, I actually have a pretty good rating here with uh, Kevin Vermark so Vermark 70 today on his prologue it's almost entirely prologue rating anything over 5k does start taking from your time trial which for him is a 65 today so that's still not bad uh, combined between the two that puts him at about a 68 he should be able to put in a decent time and actually you can see he's got more energy than distance to cover so we're going to speed up for Vermark uh, quickest out the box but not that many riders out the box so far he's already slipped a second in that but he's able to race pretty hard here in these last couple kilometers I'd say we need to back off just slightly. 79 towards the end should be able to be a good attack speed. Final 700 meters. There you go. Push to the end. Push, 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 push. And into the lead currently by 9 seconds over Connor Swift. That is a huge change from where we were last season. Of course, it's only 8 riders, but beating all 7 of them when a season ago we were literally last place in everything we did. Just goes to show how different this team will be. The seven riders that are here are the seven new riders that I signed. So this is our first indication of how things could progress. Now he does slip out of the lead and he's going to continue to slip. He is not going to stay there. This is where I'm going to really actually fall into a bit of trouble this season because, or at least for this first objective, because we are up against it. We are very much up against the wall as uh, there, there's uh, seven world teams at, at this first race. So we've got about seven world tour teams that we're up against and that's just gonna really, really be a bit of a barrier towards us claiming a top 10. Speaking of, for Mark already down to fourth place, Robert Stannard on top of the Sandings now. And you've got energy, go ahead and use it. Tentoni, very weak prologuer, 21st overall. Telford will be next. Get our first look at him. Tentoni's got a decent mountain rating. Uh, at a 68, but that's kind of all he's got. Uh, unfortunate that he's not going to be able to compete in any way because a mountain rating is something we're going to need. Delford, Classics Rider, negative race day condition, draws a negative two today. Already down to 48th, half minute behind. Love that there's a tractor in the farm. What? That's not something they had last year. Telford might be struggling, but he's pushing towards the end here. Forty first. I'm gonna tidy things right where we're making up a little bit of ground towards the uh, finish line. Fair mark still top 10 he's down to seventh but he'll be well outside of the top 10 and that's really the worrying thing because at the moment he might be the best time we're gonna have Hawaiian just 22 seconds down but you can see just how spread out the times are starting to get that's 58th place Hawaiian 36th, 34 seconds behind Vermark, down to 10th place now. Young Gun Zeta looks like he's been given leadership, according to the AI anyway. Banajek, just a 63 time trial. This is 
this is a pure Barador. Uh, he's a 76 flat, 71 downhill base, 76, uh, 66 stamina. Barador is only a 65, but clearly his strength is on the flat. He's going to be a good lead-out rider for us. That's going to take a while to develop uh, Datajek into something more than just a strong domestique. But that 76 flat rating will really help us out uh, in, in the sprint category with that lead out. Danajek pushes to the end, 60 second, 41 seconds behind. For Mark now down to 15th. Getting a little closer to the end, we're getting up to some of the better riders. Chris Harper has the top time now. Hepburn just went top. And here we go with Athil. Athil is a little more balanced, actually a lot more balanced than our other riders. He's going to, for the, for us this season, he's going to be very much a do-it-all kind of guy. 67 mountain, 70 hill, so he's definitely our puncher. 67 time trial. Prologues is 63, but today a 61, so that really hurts. Uh, Baradur is a 71, so that's kind of his base, but stamina resistance are a little higher. He'll be very much in the mix of being one of my better riders throughout this season. At just 10 minutes and 21 seconds, the nice thing about this is gaps aren't going to be huge, but it's going to be hard to overcome these times. 71st, 49 seconds behind, and Zeta, the last one left for Mark, still in the top 25, but he is definitely slipping down the order. And as we get into the team leaders, a lot of these guys are going to have the ability to put up a better time. And finally, our last new guy, Zeta. Good base, 68 prologue, 66 today on the time trial. So, He'll be about a 67, 68, which is going to be okay for the time, but it's going to be behind for Mark. For Mark, we'll have our top time. Uh, so that's a little unfortunate that he is what we have. Zeta, really good on the flat. Okay mountain, good hills, good classics rider especially, but can we get him into more than just classics or punchy? I'd say for Mark is probably going to end up being the leader now. 36, 32 seconds. So we've got one rider in the top 25, but that's about to change, I'm sure. Yeah, Tratnik goes to the top. Here's Simile, who we uh, went up against last season. He's down the order. Boudet, Dillier, Hofstetter. These guys actually aren't really putting in great times. Bodner is. Postal Burger, 40 seconds behind for him. The Clerk, Patty Bevan. There's, there could be a, a race favorite in Patty Bevan. Hepburn ends up taking the win. I think we did hang on to close to 25th. And we're not that far off on the time. Vermark could be our leader for this race. I'll have to kind of see on the next stage how we actually fit into things what the profile of the other four stages are going to be like. 27th. Yeah, definitely not a great start. We're well outside of the top 10 right now. All right, this is where our season really begins. Stage number two, we're looking for that top 10 overall. We've got four stages to go. Two of them are sprints. Two of them are punchy. This one is considered punchy. One of the sprint stages is probably just as punchy as this one is. No climbs. It's it's just uh, punchy finishes. So we are going to be focusing on our punchy riders. Zeta, Vermark are among those guys. Athil also quite punchy. So those are, are the key guys that we're going to try to uh, build a coalition to get into the top 10 with, but Athil, 50 seconds behind, so he's going to have to support. Vermark's in the best position, but there's only 5 seconds between Zeta and Vermark. Uh, this is going to be more of 
the way these finishes are, it's going to be less about how high you finish and just more about not getting dropped and then through attrition seeing other riders fall away. So we want a good strong lead out and Vermark is a minus three. I think Zeta's probably got the better chance, but I'm going to have Vermark follow Zeta. Vermark's actually a little bit better in the sprint and could finish a little higher, could maybe compete for a stage win, could gain some time that way. Zeta is more likely to just be stable and be there at the end and allow for a good time. So Aethil will burn getting those guys there and then the rest of the team likewise. And I'm going to handle this one the way I like to handle my career mode races. Sprint train, attack, aggressive, front runner, try to leave other riders behind. That will lead to that attrition of those other riders to set us up more likely to get that top 10. Again, this is going to come less from winning or less from breaking away and more from damaging the field enough to eliminate enough riders where we end up with a small group at the finish. So just 14 kilometers to go, last little, little climb is done and we're going to be cruising towards that finish here shortly and with 12k I'm going to be setting up my sprint train here in just a moment. 11k, I think that's, that's going to do it. So Vermark is going to follow Zeta, and then follow Aethil, and then I think Hawaiian is the next guy. Oh yeah, we want that flat rating leading up to it. From here, I think flat rating is everything. Banajek, actually Banajek might even be better than Hawaiian in this case. Telford. Okay, Tintani, and then Telford will use both gels. But Telford has the better flat. And then Tintani. So Tintani, uh, where are you in the mix of the team? You're in a good position already, second wheel. So we don't need to start flat out, but we'll go 93. Pull ahead. There we go. And this is so nice to actually have a group of riders that I can trust to do something. Okay, under 10k to go, so we're going to get a bit of a speed up here by Tintani. We're already into that prime position. I should have the rest of the team out front. We do. Oh, so nice to be able to compete. All right, his gel is kicking in right at the end. We're going to use Alliance now. And there we go, Tintani done. On to Telford. Telford, this is where we're going to really put the hammer down. 7k to go. Ramp it up towards the finish. There's the 5k. You can see it just getting a little bit steeper and steeper as we go along. And now we're inside 6k. So let's use these gels. We'll get down to 5.2. Usually I go at 6, but that's on the flat. It's uphill finish. So here we go. Telford, 5k to go. And there we go. Are we getting any riders coming up beside us yet? No. That's nice. Uh, Tintani. Go ahead and hang on to the back. Telford's going to be done, so we'll get him to hang on to the back. And then Hawaiian. Your turn. 4.4k. Okay, I want him to sprint now. We're starting to go uphill. You can see it start to do a little damage to our teammates. However, you can see we're opening a gap. We're opening a gap. Oh, this could be this could be perfect. This could be perfect. Banish it. Let's keep that gap opening. 2.9k. 2.3k. Now we go into just high, high effort. And we have separation. We have separation. This is what I was aiming for. 1.5K. And looky here. Fritz Schmidt now chasing. Uh, Hawaiian, I want you to try to follow. We don't want these guys to have... Oh, what happened? Why is... Banishek, you're following for Mark. And Aethil. 
I want a fill to go a little bit further. Okay, now, Zeta, your turn. Some of these guys are back into contact, but Aethel, you're going to follow Zeta. Okay, Zeta, sprint. And here come the actual favorites. They've caught up to us, but we're still in a strong place. And there should be some group separations here at the finish. We're going to be fifth place, sixth place. Patty Bevan takes it. Standard, Milano. Seventh for Zeta. Okay, I need some group separation. Where's the group separation going to come? This is too much together right now. Way too much together. Oh, come on. It's everybody. No gaps. There's no gaps anywhere. Even though it's two minutes front to back, there's only two riders out the back. That's it. So nobody lost time. Ah, that's disappointing. That's really disappointing. I thought it would come at least two, three groups. It's just too short of a finish. Oh, they get a seven second gap. I didn't, I didn't see any opening there. Okay, there... There are a few gaps at the back here. Greipel. Wow, Andre Greipel is here. Down to a 74 sprint for him at 38 years old. So a few guys lost time. In terms of our position, though, I'm guessing it's not going to really change it much. Still 27th. <laughs> so literally no change in the standings. That's, that's the tough part here, is where can we buy some time? The next couple stages, I don't think that's likely. Stage three, yeah, that's not going to happen. Stage four, it's a little bit punchy on the finish. Could have separation. And it's not the shortest climb there at the end. So we could open things up maybe there. Stage five can definitely, it's steep enough, long enough. That's, that's the real shot to get to that top 10. I tried to open this up. We had that small gap for a moment, but it didn't hold. I went too hard too early, but I was really trying to force the issue to get separation. I knew I could still be there, thereabouts. Wasn't necessarily going for the stage win. I was going for the create groups, get riders that are ahead of me in the standings, you know, among those top 26 get 10 guys to lose time and move up the standings. That unfortunately didn't happen as the group stayed one big punch. Spread out by two minutes, but stayed one big bunch. A few riders at the back lost time, but not the rest. Still, really good positive sign that we were right there competing. We were in the top 10. I could have finished probably top five-ish if we had been going for the stage as opposed to breaking the field up a little bit. Uh, but still an incredibly positive sign to not be at the very, 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 very back of the field. <laughs> That's going to do it for this episode. I'm Kathleen Gamer. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to hit that like button and I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Be safe out there and bye for now.